paper was premiered at an experimental fly-in in Rockford, Illinois. It turned many heads and John was bombarded with questions by curious pilots. The JD-1 was more than an airplane. It was a huge challenge to the status quo in airplane design. And then, disaster struck. While John was welding in his garage, a fire broke out. The JD-1, along with years of hard work, was reduced to ashes. He could have quit, but that wasn't like John. Fueled by the unwavering support of his wife Jenny, he rolled up his sleeves yet again. John got to work, and his next creation would turn out to be his best design ever. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, the new JD-2 Delta was much more refined. The engine was now upgraded to 180 horsepower. With the extra horsepower, it could now fit four people and go much faster. Curiously, it also included small stubs on the wings, which I mentioned earlier. The Delta could now do something no other airplane had ever done before. We'll get to that in a moment. The Delta not only looked fast, but for its time, was actually the fastest home-built plane in the world. Every inch of the Delta was designed for lift. From its diamond-shaped fuselage, the airfoil-shaped body, which is actually responsible for 50% of its lifting capacity. Just as he intended, John's flying diamond had outstanding performance and the numbers were equally as impressive. It could take off using about 1,000 feet of runway, climb at 1,500 feet per minute, and cruise at 170 miles per hour. On a full tank, the Delta could carry its passengers around 750 miles, using up about 47 gallons of fuel. It was the ultimate traveling machine, flying with a stability never seen before on an experimental airplane. With its distinct shape, it could cut through turbulence far better than other planes, something both pilots and passengers could appreciate. Besides from its quirky looks, it came with a few quirky features that helped set it apart from other planes. Whereas most planes will accommodate two people in the front and two in the back, the Delta has space for one pilot who sits alone in the front and a bench seat for three passengers in the back. That's because of the diamond-shaped cabin area. You also might notice that the Delta sits on the ground with its nose up in the air. Why is that? When it takes off, it doesn't need to rotate like other planes. Instead, it simply lifts off the ground with its nose already pointed up at the sky. Another feature rarely seen at the time was a retractable landing gear, which folds using a simple hand lever. Less things to break, plus a nice arm workout while you're at it. On the ground, the Delta took up very little space. Its wings were only 22 feet wide. For a comparison, the much smaller Cessna 150 is 33 feet wide. And speaking of wings, the Delta shares the same aspect ratio as a Lockheed Raptor fighter jet. This means its wings are almost as long as they are wide. The Delta might be small, but its passengers are safely surrounded by a roll cage built out of 4130 steel, a material that's both light and durable. Remember the little stubs on the wings I spoke about earlier? So what are those little things for? When John designed the Delta, his goal was for new owners to tuck their plane away in their garage. How could it do that? Well, the Delta's wings fold up like a butterfly. And when locked in position, the plane could be towed behind a car with no trailer needed at all. The driver behind this idea was cost saving. Hangar space is expensive, so John figured you can save money by towing the plane back home. When folded, the plane is only 8 feet wide, so you can easily tuck it away in most garages. So why don't we see thousands of these wonderful little machines flying around? If the plane is that great, what's the catch? John knew pilots were craving the Delta. The thing is, John wanted nothing to do with the risky business of setting up a factory and production line. So what did he do instead? He decided to sell blueprints. Nope, you couldn't buy a Delta out of a showroom. And John wouldn't sell it as a kit either. You had to build this plane from scratch, all by yourself. Not a big deal, right? All you have to do is become a specialist in welding, aerodynamics, welding, electrical systems, welding, avionics installation, engine installation, and more welding. Plus many other skills most people don't have the patience or ability to learn. I certainly don't. The Delta on average took between four to 5,000 hours to build. One Delta owner reported it took him only 39 years to build. As you can see, there's not a lot of people willing to put in all the time and sweat equity to build one. 
As a result, there's only a small handful left flying. The Delta never came close to finding the success John was hoping for, but then, maybe it was meant to be. After all, after putting up with years of bruises, blisters, and tears, after years of grinding away relentlessly and slowly seeking the plane take shape, you begin to realize that building a complex aircraft like the Delta is a long marathon, and the finished product becomes a prize at the end of your building journey. From the beginning, John Dyke was very supportive of the small group of Delta builders who overcame all the hardships and obstacles to lead their plane. For many years, Delta owners have gathered together at air shows, sharing their experiences on their Delta journey and teaching a new generation on what it was like to build your own little fighter jet. As to the few owners who had the willpower and perseverance to build one, the Delta was everything they dreamed of in a plane and more. John said it best when describing the Delta. It flies like all airplanes should, but don't. <laughs>